Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to try adding some oxides to my base glaze. A while ago, I dove into mixing up my own glazes. I've been using the glazes from Joe Thompson at Old Forge Creations. He has a bunch of glazes on Glazy, and he shows them off here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. One of the nice things that Joe has done is he's picked a base recipe that can be modified relatively easy. He actually has a few of them. I've mostly been using his floating recipe. Not too long ago, I also mixed up a batch of his base glossy recipe. So here, I'm going to take that base glossy recipe and add a few different oxides that I recently picked up and see if we can get some colors out of it. This is a bunch of Joe's glossy base. I went ahead and mixed it up and I separated it out into four different batches. In each of these, I have 300 grams by dry weight of the base gloss glaze. The idea is to take this and then add some oxides and that should give us some color. And if you can't guess, I have four different tubs here, so we're going to try four different oxides. The first one is cobalt. This one fires a very pretty blue color. I've used this in the floating recipe and I really like it. Next is copper. This one goes green, and again, I've used this in the floating recipe. Next up is rutile. I have some granular rutile where I was using it to try and get some speckles in my clay body and or glaze. This one's powdered form, so it actually mixes into the glaze. And from the pictures from Joe, it looks like it fires an interesting yellowish color. And last up is manganese dioxide. Those are the four oxides. I was looking at Joe's recipes and it looks like 1% for most of these should be a pretty good starting point. Here is my high precision scale I just pulled out. I have 300 grams of dry glaze in each of these. So 1% is gonna be three grams that I need of each of the different oxides. Okay, I think we're set to start measuring things out. So I'm gonna turn on my scale here. I have the cobalt carbonate first. And I've got a popsicle stick I use to just scoop out little bits. Three point oh six. I think that's going to be close enough. So I take all this and dump it in here. I've got a lid here. Then I'm going to go ahead and write down cobalt. One percent. So I can keep track of it. In a second, we'll mix all these up. Next up, let's do copper. And again, three grams. All right, got that one on the nose. It goes in. Now I'm gonna do copper. I wanna label these right away. I've made the accident of not doing that before and I had to fire a test towel to figure out which color was which. And that's because we don't need much of these oxides and they don't add much color to the base glaze. They all look relatively white when they're done. Let's do the rutile next. This one is new to me, in this form anyways. It also seems to be much more dense than the others. And finally, the manganese. And let's wipe everything down. Just in case I spilled, there isn't any dust floating around. I just pulled up my immersion blender. I'm gonna use this to mix up all the glazes to make sure all the oxides are thoroughly mixed in. And while I was at it, I made up some more permanent labels. So first five gloss, 1% cobalt, I put that on the lid and I put it on the side as well. That way if the lid gets separated from the container, I still know which one's which. That's also a lesson I've learned the hard way. These deli containers are relatively nice. That fits the immersion blender pretty well and it's tall enough that I can not worry about it splashing out. So I'm just gonna take my immersion blender and give it a quick stir. That way there aren't any powders and we'll put the power to it. All right, that's good for an initial mix. I will mix it up one more time before I use it. And I have some clean water here hiding off to the side. Wash off the head.
And we'll do the same thing to the other three. Okay, here are all four glazes mixed up. They are subtly different colors, but you definitely want to label them. So cobalt, copper, rutile, and manganese. Now I want to use these to do some tests. For that, I'm going to use these small little cups. I've been using these for tests, and I've also been turning them into candles afterwards. I have several of these, and I've glazed all the insides with clear, and we're just going to put the glaze on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and do a matrix of these. I want to try and see what the pot looks like with just the raw glaze, and I want to see what it looks like layered. To do a full matrix, I need 16 pots. I actually don't have that many. I have 12, though. And so I'm going to use those 12. What I'm going to miss is the diagonal, where it's just the raw glaze by itself. We'll have to look at the bottom of the pot to see what that looks like. All right, first up is the cobalt. And I want to take three pots and dip them all the way. And this will displace the glaze, so I should have plenty. That's it for the cobalt for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. And I'm going to get a little piece of paper here to make sure these are all labeled. Now the same thing for copper. I'm going to do these three here. And finally, the manganese. All right, that's the first coat on all of these. Let me switch them around so it makes more sense. So we have four rows, cobalt, copper, rutile, and magnetese. Now what we're going to do is make use of the columns. So I'm not going to do cobalt on cobalt, since I don't have 16 cups. So I'm going to do cobalt on copper next. So here's the copper off to the side. Just do like halfway. All right, and I'm not going to do copper on copper. Actually, let me spread these out one more. OK, I just rearranged these. So this one is the copper on top of cobalt. I'm not going to do cobalt on top of cobalt. This one will wind up being rutile on cobalt and the manganese on cobalt. For this row, this one will be cobalt on copper, but I don't have the cobalt out. I have the copper out right now. This will be copper on copper. I'm not going to do. This one is the rutile, cobalt, copper. So we need to do this one, copper on top of the cobalt. And since this is the copper column, we want copper on top of manganese as well. All right, so now we're all done with the copper. So let's go back and catch the cobalt roll that we missed. So we don't need cobalt on cobalt, but we need cobalt on copper. And cobalt on rutiles next. And cobalt on magnetese. All right, so cobalt on top of each of the different glazes, copper on top of each of the different glazes. Now we need rutile on top of each of the different glazes. Rutile on copper. No rutile on rutile. Rutile on manganese. And then finally, manganese on top of the cobalt, on top of the copper, on top of the rutile. All right, that's it with the new glazes. So hopefully this makes sense. So we have cobalt, copper, rutile, manganese, and then cobalt, copper, rutile, manganese. We don't have cobalt on cobalt, copper on copper, rutile on rutile, or manganese on manganese. The bottom of all these pots will be just the straight up glaze with just one oxide in it. And then the tops are with two oxides. And we have both combinations. We have one oxide on the bottom and then vice versa, that oxide on the top. 
So for instance, we have cobalt on the bottom and manganese on the top. And over on this corner, we have manganese on the bottom and cobalt on top. And we have that for all the different combinations. So we can see if there's an effect of putting one oxide on top versus it being on the bottom. These all need to dry and then they'll go into my glaze firing. I'm going to need to take some good notes so that I know which one's which. And I'll need to put them in the kiln very carefully so I can keep track. Let's time travel and see what they look like. Overall, we had a successful test with one exception. You'll notice this here is not a pot, it's a test tile. As I was getting ready to load the kiln, I had a pot that decided to do a gravity check and gravity won. So I went ahead and remade this particular test using a test tile. So we have lots of things to look at. First off, we can look at the bottom of all these pots to see what the base color looks like. So here is the cobalt glossy all by itself. This bottom band right here. Same here. This one, when I put it on, I was getting the weird alligatoring effect. So I think I just hadn't cleaned the pot properly. So I would ignore that. That is user error. Here you can see it again that went on much better. So I think these are good examples of just what the cobalt gloss would look like. And with the copper gloss, we have this greenish color on the bottom. Same thing here and here. It's a really nice solid green. Next, the rutile. So this one's a very pale yellow. When I was looking at the different recipes, rutile was the only one that looked like it would probably want a higher percentage than 1%. And so if you want a nice subtle yellow color, I think this would work. If you wanted something darker, definitely add more than 1%. So I think that's probably a future test I'll do. And then finally, the manganese. So it's this brown oranges color. It's pretty cool. All right, so those are all the straight up glazes since we didn't have the diagonal. I put that on the wrong spot. So yeah, there's the diagonal. That would just be the raw glaze. So now we can compare, say, the ordering effects. So this one here has copper on top of the cobalt. The copper basically disappeared. There's a different like surface finish texture and the color is slightly different, but that's still very much blue. Versus here, we have the blue on top of the copper. And that's a different color. There's a different interesting effect there. So we can compare those two directly and see that the blue is less strong here. We can compare these two. So this one has the rutile on top. Again, I don't see much of an effect here. But here again, when we put the cobalt on top of the rutile, we're getting a different, different effect. And the last cobalt example, again, the magnetis on top, maybe a little bit darker color. Here it's a little bit more translucent. So in general, it seems like the cobalt eats the color if, when it's on the bottom. If you put the cobalt on top, we'll get some slightly different effects. All right, let's look at the copper comparisons. So we already did the cobalt on copper. So we have the rutile on top of the copper. That darkened it up maybe a little bit, add a little bit of yellow color. Versus this one is much more light. So this one has the copper on top of the rutile. So it's a more subtle shade of green. And the manganese on top. This one darkened up the green a little bit more. Versus here, we actually have a really interesting kind of variegated effect. So it turned the green into a much more of a brown family. So definitely a difference in application order. And then finally, the manganese and rutile. So this one has the rutile on the bottom with the manganese on top and vice versa. This one with the rutile on top, I can tell where the line was, but I couldn't tell there's much of a colored variation there. Versus here, it left the rutile color on the bottom and the manganese came through pretty strong on the top. That's interesting. I had suspected that the order of application of the glazes mattered, and indeed it does. It definitely changes the color of these. So with the exception of one broken pot and some user error applying the glaze to some pots that weren't quite clean, I think that was a very good test. These glazes look like they turned out really well and gives me some more colors to play with. And the other advantage is these are really cheap. Adding the oxides into the base glaze is much, much cheaper than buying the commercial base glazes. I have a different video doing those cost comparisons if you're curious. I do have a few more things I want to try with this base glaze. I have a couple more oxides that I can play with, as well as some mason stains. Those are on my to-do list. We'll see when I get to them. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.